Hello, this is Sam Fari again, the instructional designer in New York. Um, I am here to give you a brief tour of the authoring tool and just to get you acquainted with the tools you need to be as creative as you can be in EdApp. Okay, so back at the admin portal, we are going to click on a course. I'm going to keep clicking on gender bias just because we've been using it uh, for the branding video, etc. I'm going to click on the lesson that I want to edit in the authoring tool. And then I'm going to click in, on this button in the top right corner, edit lesson content. And as soon as I click that, I am in the authoring tool. The authoring tool, you have a preview uh, slide here. This is, this is completely interactive and it coincides with here, your list of uh, templates and slides. And this is where you can manipulate those templates and slides. Uh, here's where you will type in your answers, the, the answer field, the core message field, the reinforcements, et cetera. Actually, you can do things also like the social learning tab that we'll uh, go over later. Um, you, you have the scoring tab here, and you also have the stars tab here. But to get into the authoring tool, the, the real, the template library, you would click on this plus sign, add a new slide. And as soon as you're there, you have a whole toolbox full of templates that you can use. We're just gonna go over some of these sections here. And I, I'm gonna go over the, the uh, sections here of these templates, but I would really encourage you to explore and experiment because at EdApp, we make the tools for you to be as creative as you can be. And there are things you will discover in all of these templates. We have many templates. I can't possibly go over every single one of them, but what I can do is show you the kinds of uh, templates that we have in our library. So on the first tab, which is on the left, is the content, or excuse me, are the content slides. Uh, the content templates are perfect for transferring knowledge and introducing new content to your learners uh, for the first time. So this is, does not require a right or wrong answer. This is purely knowledge transfer that's happening here. And if you see, we have things like media collection. This is where you could upload video, photo, and sound. You have a peer authoring template, which we'll go over uh, later. You have a uh, parallax. This is for those that are really savvy with their images and layers. It can give it a sort of 3D effect. If you move your mobile phone, the images will move. It's a little more complicated, but it's pretty simple to use. Uh, the scratch to reveal. This is a great uh, template to use just to show your learners the sort of range of motion. What it does is it allows learners, I'm gonna click on this, it allows learners to uh, touch the screen and see what's underneath. And we put this usually pretty early. Actually, it's early in this lesson. And the reason for that is just, we like to show our learners at the beginning of a lesson, just how interactive uh, EdApp can be and how interactive their courses are. Okay, so underneath the content templates, we have the concept templates, and this is to reinforce singular concepts by having your learners uh, recreate and filter through statements. Um, this is a great way of just checking knowledge. We suggest every one to two slides to have some sort of interaction slide, and the concept slides are part of those interactions. Um, I use these ones quite a bit. Uh, the fill in, the missing word is great, and the strikeout is fun to use. The strikeout, your le uh, learners can just draw all over the screen if they wanted to, but they can also strike out the incorrect word. Okay, great. They click OK and done. Boom. Okay, underneath the concepts, we have multiple choice. These uh, templates reinforce uh, key concepts by having learners identify the correct answer from a pool of options. And if you see here, we have many ways of doing that. Uh, we have the circle the answer, which is great. Another template that you draw on the screen and circle the correct answer. We have a speech bubble template, and this is good for interactions with either customers or other people or coworkers or students. This is just a great situational template to, to use. The numbers template uh, asks number-based questions with templates designed from the ground up for numerical reinforcement. And this is really good for uh, thinking of ratios. Here, this is a sort of a ratio. You can say, oh, this is 30%, 20%, others 50, et cetera. 
Uh, you have pie charts here where you can select uh, percentages, but then you also have these number sentences where you can test facts and things like that. And they, they're pretty great. Um, I'll show you one of these number templates here. I think we have one number sentence and you can just see the movement here of how the numbers go up. It's, it's pretty, pretty awesome template. It's very simple and pretty awesome. Okay, under the number templates, we have the relationship templates and they really reinforce connections between related concepts. Um, this is a great one. This is another draw on the screen one where you would have a concept and maybe you match it with its description, et cetera. Um, it also has your drag and match options are here. So where you would drag objects and here, this is where you would put your PNGs that can have that sort of see-through effect on part of them. Next is the uh, very popular aspect of EdApp and it's the gaming slides. And although those interactions, you could all earn stars throughout those interactions, the gaming slides are really like a big, okay, sit down, we're about to just have fun with some games and you have an opportunity to win many stars. Um, some of the best ones, well, they're all great, but the true or false is a very intellectually stimulating game. Yeah, it's a swipe left or right situation. Um, you can swipe true, you can swipe false, and actually you can uh, change what those uh, terms are. So this is completely customizable. A lot of our games are customizable and interactions. So I would say experiment, see what you can do, what you can change, how you can make it yours. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of possibilities you could uh, do with these games. Uh, the memory game is great where you match tiles. You could either match images or words with their descriptions or concepts, et cetera. And once you match them, oh, let's see if I can match this one. There you go. So you can see uh, you have a timer and a score point or scoreboard right here. Okay, moving on. Actually, before we move on, we also have a, a jumble word template. Um, this you would type in a few words, and this is good if you want keywords to come across. I would suggest this this uh, game here. And the letter jumble is great for that as well. If there are just key concepts, words, and phrases you want the learner to walk away with, these are great games to end on. And they, you don't have to have a game always at the end of a lesson. You could have it in the middle. You could have it in the beginning. It, it's all up to you. It's completely customizable to your needs. Um, under the games templates, we have these survey slides. Um, these gather feedback from learners about your lessons or about their own experiences. This free text could actually be used for many uh, th things, not just how would, would you improve the lesson. It could say, what would you like to learn more about in the future? And that could dictate the type of courseware that you'll make in the future. Um, we also have a quantitative rating slide, which is zero to five. How confident are you and your understanding after taking this lesson? That's always great. And this multiple choice, which is great. You will be able to see the specific answers that your uh, learners check here. And the quadrant, which is also a kind of quantitative way of saying I'm confident here, not so confident in this area, et cetera. In the advanced uh, templates, they allow you to take your lessons further by unlocking certain features and presenting your content. Um, here you have your external URL. You can embed, you can embed a web page into your lesson. You can have a question pool, kind of traditional instructional design, where you have a bunch of questions at once. You also have a scoring package to play a scoring package if you need to. Underneath advanced, you have your favorites. This is where you can mark the templates that you like to use, and this is this is great for learners as what or excuse me admins. And it's also great for the community as a whole as templates uh, actually have a number of how many times they're favorited underneath each one of them. So that's part of the data-driven learning model that uh, EdApp uses. And here you have an import uh, section or an import button. And this allows you to import slides from other courses in your, uh, in your account. So if you want to take a, a slide from another lesson into your, to this lesson, it would adapt all of the branding that this lesson has and integrate right away. We really find that the sweet spot of micro lessons is between eight to 12 slides. 
Uh, the reason for that is completion rates are just much, much higher when they're around eight to 12 slides. Okay, thank you so much for your time and uh, happy authoring.